got some names now for some of the, the groups that get broken down. So the uh, gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria are two major categories. There are organisms that don't sometimes fall into either group, which we're kind of mostly leaving off um, for now. We're going to just kind of focus on these. and We're not going to be all-inclusive or that, that specific. We're just going to get into the, the basics of them. So for the gram-positive bacteria, we said they're broken down uh, first, really not by um, coccidia or bacilli, but by high and low GC, so that's over 50% uh, for high and below 50% for low. The high group is called actinobacteria, and the low GC group is called the firmicutes. Uh, the actinobacteria group um, is a group that's often found in the soil. Uh, they're important um, for recycling nutrients and nitrogen fixation um, and another uh, lot of important things that they do um, within the soils. Firmicutes are important uh, gut bacteria, so this is the human gut. And they make up a large uh, portion of the, the gut bacteria. Uh, they're both gram positive and, I'm oh, sorry, they're both coxy and bacilli uh, in both groups, right? So it's not divided up one way or the other. So the main thing to know is the group called actinobacteria are a group of gram positive bacteria found in many places. So not only the soil, not exclusively, but uh, a lot of them are found in the soils um, and they tend to have the high GC content. The firmicutes is another group of gram positive bacteria, could be coxy or bacilli. Uh, they tend to be found, again, a large number of them are found within uh, the human gut. Gram-negative bacteria. Gram-negative, and these are, sorry, I should have uh, said this before, too. These are the names of phyla, right? So actinobacteria, firmicutes, and uh, proteobacteria also are going to be uh, phyla. Now the protea, so gram-negative bacteria, the major group of gram-negative are proteobacteria, and then the others that don't fit into this are just called non-proteo, which we'll get, it, we'll get to at the end. The proteobacteria are then broken into several subgroups. There's the alpha proteo, beta proteobacteria, gamma proteobacteria, delta, and epsilon. Okay. All right. The alpha proteobacteria are uh, oligotrophic. Uh, also the term chemolithotrophic. Essentially, they don't need a lot of nutrients, and here they can get energy from inorganic, N, uh, I see, or in, inorganic sources. Um, so we tend to find these uh, a lot also in the, in the environment. Okay, um, uh, beta proteobacteria are eutrophic, they require high nutrients. They uh, tend to be more um, pathogens, tend to belong to this particular group. The gamma proteobacteria, this is probably the most, the largest and most diverse group. So can't just kind of say that they use nutrients in a specific way, or this is because they kind of have a huge range, uh, aerobic, anaerobic, all, all different types of organisms. A lot of these are also our, our gut bacteria. Uh, we'll find that a lot of them in the gut, and uh, they're very common bacteria. Of all the bacteria we end up working with in lab, uh, of the gram-negative bacteria, pretty, I think all of them, or most all of them are um, gamma proteobacteria. They all belong to this group. Delta proteobacteria, um, it's a little bit smaller group. These tend to be sulfur reducers. And again, these characteristics I'm giving are general for many members of the group. There are going to be exceptions to all these. They're, they're based on the 16S, or small subunit ribosomal, which is the same thing, um, subunit sequencing. That's how they're broken down. So some groups are categorized as one related
common group, and yet when you look for a characteristic, so what do they share, what do they have, it's very difficult to find any characteristic outwardly that they share um, because we're basing it strictly on this DNA sequencing. Um, one of the things that they are going to share is they're going to be gram-negative uh, as far as uh, morphology, not necessarily the same, uh, different types of nutrient utilization, not always going to be the same. Within a group, they're not going to be the same or have rules. But these are sort of overview for many members of the group. So just kind of keep that in mind. Okay, and the epsilon um, proteobacteria, this is the smallest uh, group with the least, uh, the least number of uh, members. And let me, let me add some note about that particular group. Um, Oh yeah, the one last thing about this group I totally forgot is uh, epsilon in general, same same thing. Many of them tend to be microaerophiles. So microaerophile means they're uh, aerobic, they need oxygen, but they need uh, reduced levels of oxygen. And again, that's not every single member of the group, but it tends to be a lot of uh, microaerophiles. So these are all gram-negative bacteria, uh, could be rods or, or cocci. And these are the breakdown, the actual names of the groups, alpha proteobacteria, beta proteobacteria. And we said they're, in general, the uh, characteristics of those groups tend to have some of these, some of these traits as a, as a majority of them. Now, whatever bacteria are not proteobacteria that are gram negative, we have um, another category for them. These are non-proteo. Now, many of these actually don't stain gram negative. So that's not th they're categorized here again because of genetic relationships. So one of the first uh, groups we have here are the spirochetes. So some uh, some classifications will just say they're not gram-negative bacteria based on the stain, but based on the relationships of their DNA sequencing, they tend to be clustered in this group and put under the non-proteo bacteria um, for the gram-negative type. Spirochetes, uh, the thing to know about them, a lot of pathogens are uh, spirochetes, and I'm going to try to do this here. Um, if that's like the outer cell wall, well, I'll, actually, basically, I'll just kind of put here. Um, there's this in the space between the cell wall and the cell, the cytoplasm, is the periplasm. And this group is kind of unique in that they have a flagella that is within the periplasm, right? So, so remember, there's a there's the cell wall, okay, and then there's the cell membrane, and then there's a space between the cell membrane and the cell wall called the periplasm. Bacteria who have a flagella typically flagella extends from the cell like this. Here in this particular case with the spirochetes, this is a periplasmic flagella, and it causes them to move like a corkscrew. And so they tend to be uh, very good at moving through more solid tissues and also, which is why when you're uh, infected with a spirochete, it's difficult to treat them with antibiotics because they're not very localized. They tend to spread throughout tissues and it's difficult to then get the antibiotics to those uh, tissues. So Lyme disease, uh, the bacteria that causes Lyme disease um, is a spirochete, for example. Um, beyond the spirochetes, there is a subgroup called the CFB group. Bacteroides is the B, uh, and this is also another very important human gut bacteria group. A gut bacteria, uh, may, as much as maybe 30% um, of your gut bacteria belongs to this, this one group here. So we said there are gut bacteria over here in the gamma proteobacteria, um, but the Bacteroides, which are actually non-proteobacteria, they're, they're not within that group, they're in a different, different classification. Uh, the Bacteroides, they make up a large, large amount of your gut bacteria. So you actually have Firmicutes and Bacteroides, these are a gram-positive group and a gram, technically gram-negative group, 
um, do make up a lot of the gut bacteria, and people have found that ratios between Firmicutes and Bacteroides uh, are indicative of a number of different conditions, everything from uh, being related to obesity to a number of different disease have to do with imbalances actually between the two, uh, where there is a norm that we would expect, and when in the laboratory we manipulate animals to push that toward one or the other, um, the organisms get become ill, right? But when the balances are reestablished, the organisms tend to become healthy again. Right? So, um, but so these that's why their names are important to you because they are, they are going to be important later as we talk about the the human microbiome right? and, uh, and other aspects of our biology. So um, the others are small small groups which we're really never going to talk about much in our course. Uh, Cytophaga. Uh, typically a freshwater aquatic uh, bacteria that glides around um, and then there's the fusobacteria. Uh, those are found in the human mouth often. Which we see them there. And I think that's pretty much it, or we're going to kind of cover for this. All right. So um, as far as names and, and the breakdown goes, um, there's also going to be, in addition to this in, in our course, names, actually genus names, of some very well-known organisms within some of these groups, which I'll be giving uh, to you as a separate sort of table to look at. But as far as you're explaining, say in an essay question, you know, if I said, uh, can you list um, the groups of organisms that belong to the gram positive and uh, gram negative uh, groups of bacteria. And you could say, well, the gram positive, how they're broken down is by GC content, high and low GC. The high GC is called actinobacteria. The low GC is called firmicutes. All different kinds of members of these groups. They could be uh, bacilli or coxi or have other kind of characteristics. But in general, actinobacteria, a lot of them are associated with the soil. Whereas the firmicutes, the majority of these are really well known for being associated with our gut. When we go to the gram-negative bacteria, most of them all belong into this group called the proteobacteria. There are some that are also just non-proteo. They fall without. They fall out of there. The proteobacteria contain alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and epsilon proteobacteria. Alpha proteobacteria tend to be chemolithotrophic using inorganic energy sources and not requiring high nutrients. Beta proteobacteria require high nutrients in order to grow. Many of them tend to be uh, pathogens. Gamma proteobacteria are a really diverse group, um, and we find a lot of them associated with the human gut uh, at some point. The delta proteobacteria are often sulfur reducers. The epsilon proteobacteria are microaerophiles, again, as general characteristics. And then we have the spirochetes, separate as a non proteobacteria with their periplasmic flagella, uh, and pretty much focus on this other, this last one here, the, the Bacteroides, because there you'll see that name again um, as a uh, very important part of the human gut microbiome. You kind of can uh, identify those names, um, whether in some multiple choice questions, matching questions, or in an essay to be able to kind of sketch out something like this, then you'll be um, doing really, really well. Right? Um,